Oh, Mr. Price. Hello, oh, we are on the record. Right, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we get started. Uh, so I reviewed the uh, instructions that each has emailed me. Uh, and the only, and I've sort of created sort of a combination of instructions here. Um, but Mr. Price, I need to know if you have any comments regarding the instruction of self-protection for Mr. Masters. Because you did not offer it and the defense did. I mean, Judge, at this point, I mean, I would object to it. I do not believe that there is proof at this point to indicate uh, that there's a basis for self-protection. All right. And I guess what Mr. Price, I mean, this is something we probably need to know. It's been my understanding that the defendant is going to testify. Is that true? Oh, he's, he's going on. All right. So, and I think, let's, have, let's say that that's the case, Mr. Price, and that the defendant says, you know, whatever I was in fear of my life or was a, of a belief that you know I was going to be harmed then would you have an objection to the self-defense I mean, I, <clears throat> what I believe that the proof is going to be I would still have an objection to it but of course it all would go what's the basis of your objection my basis of, of, of the, it doesn't the fit in your theory of the cases I mean I'm not trying to rush it no, but no, is that no, 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 no. It, it has nothing to do I mean no, no not because it's inconsistent with my theory of the case simply I don't know what version he's going to testify to. Now, if he, now if, he, if, he, if he takes the stand and says, hey, look, I was protecting myself, then, of course, I'm, I don't have an objection right. to it because I think it's appropriate to put it in there, and obviously his right to argue. Okay. So I guess what uh, – so we may not be able to answer the question to this right moment, or <clears> – and Mr. Uh, State Mayor, you're prepared to represent that the defendant is going to testify and he's going to testify that he was in reasonable apprehension for his safety during this whole encounter. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, let's let the testimony come in and it looks to me like, you know, he's entitled to the self-protection instruction. And, and that really is the crux of the entire case is, you know, what happened here. Okay. But otherwise, I don't really see any uh, uh, big conflicts between the, the two sets of instructions that were submitted. So I think we're going to be pretty good on that, and I, I'm going to hope to get you a copy of the instructions here shortly. All right. Now, the only other thing that I have, Mr. Price, and I'm, I'm a little concerned about this, I think we have a very clean trial so far. We have a really, it's, it's a compliment to both sides. This trial is very clean. It's very, you know, it's not, you know, a lot of difficult, um, controversial rulings or presentations of evidence. There's nothing really, um, it's a very clean trial. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is if uh, you intend to introduce some of these videos, or whatever they are, the YouTube videos, whatever's on the disc. Judge, right now, Your Honor, that is my intention. Uh, and of course, again, uh, the caveat is depending on what the testimony of the defendant is. Welcome. I mean, you know, counsel is welcome to see what I have. Uh, I think that none of what I have is anything new to them. Uh, okay. And all that I'm trying to get to here is this. <clears throat> I have no idea. I've not seen these things. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. <clears throat> but if the point is, <clears throat> and I guess just to have some kind of basic understanding of generally, uh, is it your intention to introduce some or all of every one of these videos? I intend to ask the defendant about, uh, let's see, I think I have two videos, Judge, and I think one, first of all, one video is, is, a, is a report and an interview that we gave to WBRB. Uh, where he admits that uh, he threw the first punch. Okay. Uh, and then there is some question about 
well, three things that are on there that I think are impertinent. I just said I, that I heard one, his admission that he beat the first punch, uh, the fact that he has filed a civil lawsuit, and three, the uh, he was questioned about the veracity of the of, of the nature of his injury. Although I'm not interested in getting into too much about his injury because there's a federal civil lawsuit pending and I, and I don't want to turn this into a personal injury action. But, uh, but those are the three things that are on that, that interview. What's the length of the TV video? My video is <coughs> roughly about, I, I want to say, I don't think it's a minute plus. All right. All right. The only thing I would say as to the videos Well, but I think what, let's just, this may be the same issue for all of them, but I think Mr. Price's intention is to do this. He's going to ask him about the factual contents, at least of the television interview, and give the defendant a chance to either admit or deny it. And then if he admits or, if he denies it, if he admits it, I'm not sure the video comes in. If he denies it, then Mr. Price says he wants to show at least that portion of the video. And then the question is, Mr. Price, are you going to be able to, if you have a, are you going to be able to cut down the video that, so that it is in direct response to the denials of the defendant? You have the tech, technology to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Outstanding. And again, I don't know what they are, and we'll probably have to review them before they come in. But if it's questions and answers, we don't need the, uh, Mr. Price, you don't have a belief that any kind of editorial comment by the newscasters is relevant, do you? No. All right. Any, you know, how they qualified or explain what a person says is probably not relevant. And I don't, you know. Okay, so your second interview, uh, uh, video or whatever it is, what's the second one? Criticism of Louisville Metro. Prior to the incident. Prior to this incident. Okay, hang on. He talks about it is appropriate to fight the Louisville Metro Police Department. Hang on for a second. I want to make sure I understand this. All right, so there's a video of the defendant, right? There's a video of the defendant, and the video was created prior to this incident. Right, that's my understanding. All right. And that, and then in the video, he specifically states that the, it's LMPD, the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department, and that somehow it's okay to fight LMPD. Yes. Really? How long is that video? That video is, well, actually, the actual video was about nine minutes, but I cut that down. His, when, when he says that, that's only about a minute and a half. All right. And, uh, yes, sir, sir, I, my, we, we could take our peg. It's more prejudicial than probative. It's a prior act. Well, Mr. Price would have to establish its relevance, and he's going to do that, I presume, questioning Mr. Um, Masters. And I guess we'll have to review whatever it is that Mr. Price is intending to offer if all of the other uh, sort of foundation is laid for it. We'll, we'll preview them. And is that the only videos you're talking about? No, Your Honor, there, there is a, this defendant has a website. There is a website where he talks about is how to how to survive an encounter with the police and within that website there is a link and I think this website is a website that he had up at, at probably at least a year and a half prior to uh, this particular incident and judge all of this in, in, in the Commonwealth's opinion goes to this defendant's state of mind and refutes his whole idea 
this is all about self-defense. And he came there with hope and intent of fighting these police officers who knew they were police officers for safety's sake. So that's some excerpt from his website, that one website. And then the other video, the video, of course, this defendant has always had a problem with the police. And I want to show, you know, where he had a problem with uh, a police officer in Warsaw uh, before the Warsaw City Council. Uh, and again, Judge, I think all of this, when you take all of this together, it establishes that pattern of, uh, specifically of his state of mind and his feeling about the police and how, uh, you know, and I think it really suggests what his state of mind was at that time when he was just approached by the police. Because the real issue here is whether at one point, part of the issue is, did they say they were police before his nose was broken, or did they say we're the police afterwards? Okay, and I think that that's really one of the primary factual disputes here. Did you know they were police? And if you knew they were police, did, did you, in light of that, continue to proceed? And I think all of his conduct prior to that time suggests that he didn't. Okay, hang on. I think you've, Mr. Price, you've described how this case is going to break one way or the other. Okay, now, but I'm not real sure how these videos help the jury understand whether or not Mr. Masters knew that these two detectives were police officers before this confrontation began. Okay, I mean, how is the question? Well, well, to us it's real simple, Judge. He knew because they said they were police, and he didn't care because of his mindset and his venom towards the police in general. Okay, but I, I'm still missing. You have a comment, Mr. Honor, State Mayor? For, first of all, as it pertains to the website and the video on the website, Mr. Shore is the one that's gone through discovery. He's indicated he has not received that. Maybe it was his past two videos that were just discussed about a Warsaw incident about this other one. I have never seen those videos. All right, well, that, that's going to make it complicated. Okay. All right. Second, second of all, the way the evidence has come out so far, and this is according to the Commonwealth's case, is that he was already running towards the vehicle before anyone said anything. So I don't, I don't know how, how that that argument comes into play is the, his conduct once they yelled police, police, police. I, I, he was already running towards him. It wasn't a marked unit that he was, you know, attacking. It was it was a, a plain car, and that's according to the Commonwealth case. Okay, so I guess the uh, the real point is this: we're gonna ha we're gonna have problems with any video that you have not surrendered to the defense. Those are gonna be real. I don't know how you can overcome that. For impeachment purposes. Uh, you know, I mean, but just for impeachment purposes, uh, I probably would have many, many more if I know that the defendant is probably going to take the stand. All right. And there's a couple of things. I'm, I'm, I'm not real, you know, Mr. Masters' issues with a police department, some other jurisdiction, I'm not real sure how that helps us at all. And again, just like we don't want to try the civil case, we don't want to try some other incident, some other place. And I, I think you're right, and I think that we're going to have to preview it anyway um, before, after the defendant testifies, then we're going to have to really talk about very specific, just exactly what you intend to introduce. All right. And then we'll, you'll get a ruling at that time. All right. Now I've lost my deputy. I swear I cannot do this. All right. <laughs> I know, but I, you know, weather's being outside is not good. Who's the guy in the back row you got there, Carl? Is he with you? He's a good prosecutor. All right, tell him, if you would, will you ever get Mr. Uh, Weathers, the uh, deputy, and tell him we're ready? Everybody ready? We're ready, Your Honor. You ready, Mr. Price? Uh, yeah, I don't know who these individuals are. They're, they're related to uh, John. Are they witnesses? No, they're just 
Go get the deputy, please. Okay, Applehead did draw the, the explosion case. So, all right, so everybody's ready. Uh huh. 